Welcome back. To Satisfactory. I'm looking at doing an, another blueprint. And the reason is, is because we need computers. But doing another computer blueprint would have been too easy. I also want to generate a few radio control units. We've been basically spending tickets on radio control units lately. I think it's time that we go ahead and set ourselves up with an automated solution. So what we're going to do... Uh-oh. Short on plastic. Hold on. That means this should have some plastic in it. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to put down this manufacturer. This manufacturer is going to be the start of this whole thing. We kind of want to nuzzle, get this as close to the edge as we can while still feeling relatively confident that we have room for our merger. While we're here, we'll put a merger down to capture the merchandise. Okay, and that's probably about right. Okay, then we want to get in here. We want to make radio control units out of this. Now we've got three recipes to choose from. We're gonna stick with, I'm just making sure that I'm not changing my mind at the last minute here, as I sometimes do. We're gonna stick with this one, the classic recipe. Just because you have an alternate doesn't always mean it's the best one for use at that time. The results are gonna go this way and we're also going to pull from this way. So the way I'm envisioning it is that we'll have a bunch of drone ports down here, kind of in the theoretical ether here, and we'll send the results down here and we'll pull the inputs from there, okay? So this side we need some split tours. Now we're gonna wanna have room for all these items, right? So we're gonna put this here and this here. Now, technically, this recipe calls for three things, but that's where the fun part comes in. So right now we only need two. So that's room for aluminum casings and crystal oscillators. But we're gonna make the required computers on site. So we're gonna grab our assembler. And I think on this side, we need to give ourselves room kind of in this direction. Because we want to output the result on this line. But we don't wanna sushi belt it. And it's difficult, though not impossible, to connect like this. Let's see if we can do it like this. I don't think there's room. So basically, I put that extra merger there just for measurement sake. Ah. Yeah, that's not going to help us. We're going to have to go up an extra one. That part of this will make sense here in a minute. We're going to grab a smart splitter. We're going to give ourselves half a click of space smart splitter. Then we're going to grab the assembler. Give ourselves half a click of space. And assemble that. So the smart splitter, what we're actually doing here is we're creating computers here. So we've got this alternate recipe that allows us to use circuit boards and crystal oscillators to make computers. So we're going to use that. On the smart splitter side, on the center, it's going to do nothing, right? So we're looking at it from this direction. This is the center. This is already committed to 
radio control unit, so we don't want to do anything there. On the left, that's where we want to output our computers. We'll just name it. You don't have to name it, but it's kind of nice. And then on the right side here, we're going to do this with overflow. All right. And then we'll just finish that off like this outputs. And then it just goes straight into here. And then that will be the belt that we send the rest of our stuff down with. And since we're committed to that design, we'll connect it like that. So that way we can connect more things, more blueprints down the line. So this will output computers. The computers will all get sent to this machine over here. One, no, zero. One, two. One, two. There. So now that, this computer comes out, goes into here, gets turned into radio control units. Once this fills up, then the rest of the computers goes out and becomes merchandise for us to use elsewhere. Okay, done. Now, what we can do is look at this. We want crystal oscillators and whatever this other thing is. What's the other thing over here? Aluminum casings. So we have to remember to put crystal oscillators at the bottom so we can share that because both of these recipes take crystal oscillators in very small amounts, right? That's basically three per minute. This one's basically one and a half per minute, one and a quarter per minute. So they can share about no problem. Now, in order to make computers, we need circuit boards. Let's go upstairs, because we really don't have room. Mer the uh, manufacturer is just so ginormous. So we'll go upstairs. Well, we can't put it there, because that's going to block. If I really wanted it, I could put a conveyor wall there, but I'm not gonna. We'll just put a wall here. We'll make it high enough where it will not clip the manufacturer. Though we technically we might not, well, see, and here's the problem. There's nowhere for the wall to go down and not clip through everything. See if this made sense. It doesn't. So we'll grab this assembler, make a quick copy, and We'll drop this in, say, right here.
thinking about like how do we get it's this one we're making circuit boards right and we've got lots of circuit board options Copper sheets and silica make the most sense to me. It's based on where we currently are in our build. We've got extra. We've got surplus silica and surplus copper sheets. I could just put the connection right here. which means we would also need to connect this right here. And all of this would end up being belted. Let's move this back a little bit. Just a little, a lot. Right there. Oh, had it rotated wrong. Why didn't you tell me I had it rotated wrong? Could have saved me a whole five minutes. I know what you're saying. You're saying this is because it's a video and we can't really interact with you during a video. So you're kind of on your own. I'm like, oh yeah, I suppose that's correct. And then we'll connect this right here like this. And we'll drop down here. We'll lift this up. We could go all the way with it, really. But we'll underfeed it. Where'd you go? Right, so now, I mean, the only weird part about this is this is a four level input belt, but part of me says who cares. And we'll take on circuit board for copper sheets and silica. And then we'll drop these down. Uh, let's see. How do we want to do this? We want to drop it down and feed it into right here. I think I'll lift right back up Yeah. We'll turn it so we avoid that clip right there. That clip of the, uh, the light associated with that assembler. And then we'll drop this guy down right here. So fast. And now it's just a question of 
Can we eyeball the height of this? I think that might be off by one click. Yeah, it is. There we go. So with that, we're making circuit boards. Now, I don't think we need any additional circuit boards. So we're not gonna keep circuit boards as an output. We're gonna just make 7.5 circuit boards per minute. Underclock this. And that's going to result in you having the necessary circuit boards. You're just going to get fed the crystal oscillators. You're going to generate 2.8 computers, and then you're going to consume 1.25 computers. We actually want a little extra computer, so we're going to add computers to our network just in case we need to build a few. And then we've got radio control units which are going to get fed crystal oscillators and aluminum casing. Based off of the fact that aluminum casing is 40 per minute, that means we are limited to... Oh, that was the right button. 780 divided by 40. We're limited to 19 of these buildings. That's probably enough. Worst, worst case scenario, we just build two side by side. I mean, 19. Good grief. That's a lot. I think we'll let that be sort of the, the guts of the build. But you know what? We, we gotta we gotta have something going on here. Can't leave it that plain. Oh, we also need to power the thing. That's also a good point. Let's put some flooring down. drop in some floodlights. Then we'll put in some ceiling lights.
And then... One more floodlight. We'll put in power pole. See if we can use this power pole to easily connect all the ceiling lights. We also have to take into account connecting the additional blueprints. We just connect the power pole once and then connect these guys. And that's all set. And then if we put in one. Light here. Then we'll say right under here, we'll make that the connection for the multiple blueprints. And you connect that, then you connect here, and then you connect to there. So all of that wonderfully decorative lighting is on its own circuit and then we need to connect the power i'm gonna clip this like this And that will be the place to connect the power for the machines. Somewhere over here will be our overall power. But I think that's it. Yep, we're all done. So we receive crystal oscillators, silica, copper sheets, and aluminum casings. And then we make on-site circuit boards so we can make on-site computers so we can make radio control units. Then the output will be radio control units and computers. So there you go, not bad. Four inputs, two outputs. And that's that. We're gonna make sure we save our blueprint. Radio control computers. That'll be super confusing, but I think having computers in there will help me remember that it's also outputting computers. Also, you do have a output radio control units and computers input crystal oscillator silica copper sheets and aluminium I don't know how to spell it alum sheets oh wait no alum casings actually save all right there you go
super complicated blueprint. Getting a little bit more in depth with it. Then as usual, I'm gonna share with you our efforts to get the screenshot for the thumbnail. Where is the location for this? Thanks for hanging out. I do appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.